I had a very interesting talk with a 747 pilot. Yes, he flies the biggest passenger plane that Boeing has ever built, the 747-8, of course, you know, the one that we have here in this flight simulator as well. You know, we can tell it by the beautiful engine nacelles here that reduces noise. Also, of course, this plane is a bit bigger than the other 747s, like the 400 we recently flew here to this airport of Palma de Mallorca, and I just had an email coming in. Yes, as you might know, Lufthansa both flies the 747-400 and 800 still, and the pilot I talked to has flown both planes, of course. Since the plane's basically the same, the cockpit is basically the same as well. But in one thing, the 747-8 is a bit different, a bit worse, perhaps, a bit in a disadvantage, and that is the problem that we're going to talk about today, and that is definitely the size, because the 747 is indeed a bit bigger, a bit too big, perhaps. And a post by Boeing.com actually shows the size difference quite well. You can see the yellow wing, and that is the 747-400, and we can see the gray wing, and this is the 747-8. Yes, because the wing of the 747-8 is a whole lot, you know, longer, as you can see, a higher wingspan, the 8 is a code F plane, whereas the 747-400 is a code E plane, and that makes a major difference for airport certification. Yes, because the 747-8 is a whole lot bigger, it can only fly at a very much smaller amount of airports. Check this out, here are the IKEA regulations for E type planes, like the 747-400, and the F type planes, like the 8. We need a wider runway, from 45 meters to 60 meters. We need a wider taxiway from 23 to 25 meters. Yes, all of that stuff because of the wider wing. We need a whole lot of a bigger airport, which is interesting. I mean, we all remember the old 747 models. Those were actually able to fly at some proper places. Kai Tak, of course, the legendary KLM 747 at St. Martin. Not a long runway at all. Or check out this picture from Rand here in South Africa. The 747 used to be a beast that used to be, you know, allowed at any airport. Nowadays, with the 747-8 though, hmm, the list has shrunk down of destination airports allowed to go here. We have an official Boeing list here of the 747-8 approved airports. It's only 165, which is, I mean, there's still plenty of destinations all around the world. That's not really the issue. By the way, using uh, chat GPT here, I entered all the airports and asked it, well, what's the shortest runway the 747-8 can operate at at this list? And that is Kangaroo Lusuak Airport in Greenland. And I mean, that's not too surprising considering there is an A330 from, uh, you know, Air Greenland flying here. I think that's what it's called. But you know, after all, this is the shortest runway. It's almost 3,000 meters still, though. Around 2,800 meters, 9,100 feet. You know, that's still kind of a normal runway. Definitely nothing short, nothing dangerous. And you might think well, what's the issue here anyway? I mean, 165 airports around the world is plenty for normal operation, which, you know, is true. You know, most of the major hubs will be served with this, you know, big plane. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to fill up this plane with any passengers if it went to, you know, smaller airports. No, that's not the big problem. I'm rather talking about alternate airports. You know what happens if you run out of fuel or something or, you know, other airports get closed? What happens if, for example, you fly to Greenland, to Kangalusuak, and on your way there, you find out, oh, the airport will be closed? It's hard to find an alternate just because this plane requires so much of space. I mean, yes, there are, you know, alternate airports that are listed here that are a whole lot smaller. These are airports you wouldn't be able to fly at normally, like Adelaide, Australia, or Dallas, Fort Worth. These are all airports you would be able to fly to. Now, of course, entered all these here to JetGPT and it actually figured out the shortest runway that the 747 is approved at in any way. And that is Rarotonga International Airport in the Cook Islands that only has a 7,000 foot long runway, 2.3 kilometers. That one really is in the middle of nowhere and definitely would probably be a very required alternate airport in case anything goes wrong above the ocean. I mean, this can happen, running out of fuel, for example. Oh yeah, but we can see, this is definitely not an airport the 747 would usually be allowed to fly to. I mean, check out this relatively small runway width here. I can see where this is going. Also, this is not at all a super long runway. Even though, you know, if we're talking about runway 
length. The 747 really never was a problem. Also on the 8. Yes, hold on. There we go. We only used like half or two thirds of the runway at most. No, this plane lengthwise isn't a problem. It's more the width of these long wings. By the way, the 747 has flown to Rarotonga before, and that is near New Zealand with the 747-400. Not the new one. But back to the length question, which apparently is no issue at all on the 747-8. What is the shortest runway a 747 can land on? Blah, 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 from simple flying. A really interesting article here. What is the shortest distance recorded? Interestingly enough, a pilot and contributor to Quora by the name of Ty Yosef notes that the larger and heavier 747-8 model has been recorded as having managed to land with even less distance. After in cold weather and landing tests in Equalite in Canada, Boeing performed a test emergency landing using no more than 4,200 feet of airport runway. 1,280 meters, which is a bit boring. I mean, equally to have a 8,000 feet long runway. So they, you know, use a long runway to do some tests at it. But we know some exactly 1,200 meter long runways. Of course, we're talking about La Mole here in the south of France. Yes, this is the 1,200 meters we're talking about. You know, I think the 747 is a great example of, you know, it's not really the length, but it's the girth. I think that's what they were talking about. But see, this ramp is just way too small to handle a 747. It's the width of the plane. We don't want to touch grass with the engines, especially on the taxiway. I mean, see, check out that taxiway. That near, like, well, like, it wouldn't be nearly enough. But the runway length is no problem at all. This thing needs no runway at all. That was not even the whole runway used as well. No, the 747 doesn't struggle at all. And especially stopping is no problem, let me tell you. I mean, I've literally made a dedicated video on the stopping capabilities of the 747. Look, I mean, I can even land this thing on like a thousand meter long runway here. We'll come to Borkum here, some random German island here. Let me tell you, I don't think we'll struggle with this runway at all. Oh God, yes. With full brakes. There we go. There, there's nothing to worry about. Check out this beautiful landing. I gave my best here. Yeah, let's check this out. What a beautiful one. Okay, that was a definitely a tail strike. But I wanted to touch down. There we go. As smoothly as possible. Very satisfying landing. And there we go. No worries at all about stopping. We have these four engines that all provide reverse thrust with these huge spoilers. With all these wheels here, this plane breaks faster than lots of planes, actually. Of course, in this case as well, this plane wouldn't be able to use the taxiway at all and I've done something wrong while the landing gears collapsed. Great! So buddy, thank you so much for joining me on the 747 adventure. I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. Now thank you very much to my highly supporting members like Jamie Ashton, Mike C, James Deram, Ragings, Met RLG, Matt Fan Z, Moritz, Bellhausen, Knott's Enthusiast, Shadow, New the York, Ryland Williams, Kelly Chaos, John O'Brien, and I'm addicted to Airbus A380s. Thank you.